this doesn't see in case I need it. I want to know if it works. Yeah, we're good. Hello, hello. Okay, so mm, let's put this one over here. I'm going to stop this. Okay, so this bit pattern thingy that we created, uh, let's uh, do something better with this. I want to see if it works or not. Um, I'm just going to go through it one more time. So in here we have done a bit pattern that does this with uh, um, um, an unsigned integer and then creates an unsigned int and as a mask and I'm trying to see what I can create as a template. Actually, we'll do th uh, we'll do that later. And I just wanted to do something, but I changed my mind. Let me just cover the thing that we had, and then I'm gonna um, ask you for some kind of challenge. I don't know if it's possible or not, but. Um, this is my challenge. So you see how the bit patterns are created over here. I have unsigned int. I go, I create a mask, and um, then I'll get the size, and and I'll shift, and I'll and I'll display an integer in bits. Um, uh, everybody's uh, okay with these? Like, you want me to go through it again? Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? <laughs> So those who said no, uh, can you elaborate if you want, what you want me to go through? You want me to start from scratch or you want me to, um, what is the question? <laughs> oh, oh, the poor city city question. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies, my apologies. My apologies. So... Are we all okay with this? Thank you, Marcus. Beautiful. All right. Now that we are okay with this, uh, what I want you to do for me as a challenge is this. Create a manipulator so I can do this. See out bits and I'll go V which means it means you want V to be printed as bit pattern I don't know if, if even if it's possible or not but see if you can do it see if you can create a manipulator called bits that when you say C out then you put bits then whatever you put over here it's gonna show its bit pattern over there what is what does it look like in in memory and that'll be a very cool thing to do so did we get what we want to do what what the challenge is you want us to do that right now you want to do it right now you want to make a manipulator right now in three seconds i don't know if uh, it's three really seconds possible. maybe no, in like no, no. 10 minutes so in 10 minutes you can write that okay you can't debug it in 10 minutes but you can get the rough idea okay sure but yeah but keep it and give it to me next time because i i don't know if, it, okay. if it's we can do it or not of course it's possible but um i have ways in my mind to do it but i've never done it so it's a cool thing to do that'll be an interesting workshop for uh for a semester type of a thing um anyways um well we'll see so keep that in mind and uh we'll see um so that's my challenge i'm just gonna over here say challenge actually um should i make it a challenge and give it some marks or uh, not uh, do this do this for practice it's a uh, it's a good thing to to to, to write a manipulator at the same time uh, printing, uh, doing bitwise operators and stuff. That's going to be a nice thing to do. All right. All right. So that's that. Now we were talking about bit patterns and, uh, let me just put a bit pattern over here. So I'm going to say over here, bit pattern 
for uh, V and this one is bit pattern for W. And we shift uh, V2 to left uh, and that's going to be shown. Um, and uh, I'm going to, um, let's do it like this. W is W right shift to bit pattern W. Okay, and what I'm going to do over here is this. And I'm going to make the W. Um, let's put these things over here so we uh, know. Um, I always do this. Uh, these things we don't need to know. We understand them. This is the thing we had for the challenge. But I'm going to do this here so I have... Oh. Mm. Just a second. for something there you go I wanted to write it then I just realized that um, I have inter internet in my hand so uh, this is what I can do instead lazy but effective copy There you go. So, and let me put the bit pattern in three, four, five notes, 19 right over here. So I'm going to say bits, hex bits, hex bits, save, close. Now I can go to resources, add existing item. Hex bits are the one. There you go. Wow, way too big, but it's okay. Um, let's split the window and close that. And this is good enough. Okay, so now uh, in here for W, I'm going to put something like eight four and just to show you what I'm doing in here I'm gonna say C out and I'm gonna actually put this one in here so we know this is what is being executed and here is C out this is what is to be executed okay just to show you something about left shift and right shift and why they are why it is important to understand which one does what uh, did i just remove the whole thing over there w is equal to w right shift two. okay so i'm doing two left and right shifts and take a look let's take a look at it i'm go we're going to analyze it i'm just going to print it to see what the output is and we're going to take a look at it now uh, uh, please take a look so this is the pit pattern that we have over there and i'm going to go two to left which means this 10 over here these two is going to vanish it's going to move to right uh, so essentially as you see this is here and this is here and it keeps going like that so it shifts to left okay um, and now shift to right this one moved over here and this one moved here and these two are in uh, garbage big pot bit pocket and these two are out in big bit pocket too are we okay with this left and right shift at this moment <laughs> Thank you.
Now, this is what we need to know that is very important. Whoa, wrong one. And let me clear this up. All right. What is important is this. Take a look. I'm going to make W a regular character, not an unsigned one. Now, please appreciate that it right shifted and left filled the left with zero. Do we understand this? That the right is filled with zero over here? All right. Now, let's run this again. And I don't know why my bit pattern is giving me an error. Oh, because we don't have... Okay. I don't know if it's going to make any difference or not, but I'll do it anyway. Now it's not going to give me an error. Okay. So let's run it one more time. Oh, it said everything. Oh, seriously. Uh, how do I do this to show this to you? Character 084. Why did it do that? Uh, shift. Bit pattern of W. Okay, let me see what happened in here. Um, Maybe if I cast it, I think it's better to cast. Give me a second. Uh, is it because it's signed? Yes, or? yes, but there is a reason. I want I want to show something specific. I want to go by character. Where if it was integer, I wouldn't get any problem. But give me two seconds. Let me see if I can do it. Give me two seconds. So in here, I'm going to go. Let's see if it accepts it. I think it will. Okay, so now I just casted it to unsigned character. Bit pattern won't change, it's just casted. Now let's take a look at the difference. There you go, that's what I wanted to show. Okay, so now please take a look. When the character that I had over there was uh, was signed, not unsigned, when it shifted to right, it actually filled the left with one instead of zero. So this is something that you need to understand. Left shift, when you do, no matter what you have, it is always filled with zero because you are essentially multiplying by two. When you're dividing by two, Remember, to maintain, and something that you need to know about, uh, it, you know, it uh, in ULI, did you, did they talk about bits and representations and bit pattern in, a, in, in characters? I mean, like in, in variables, um, converting from bits to hexadecimal, did they talk about that? Fantastic. Good, good, good. So, one person says no, 5,000 people are saying yes. So... <laughs> No, let me. Um, so, I honestly don't remember. Um, okay, so um, let's do it this way. Let me just. So I'm gonna now that we have a couple of people. I, mean, I said, remember how to do it. I just don't remember. No, the, no, 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 no. That people that teaching at Seneca. What's important? Not your personal knowledge. Okay. Okay. So give me a second. I'm trying to. Bring something up here. Hmm, really? <sighs> Just a second. Just, oh, let me check. I can actually pause and continue. So, um, having uh, these things that I have written over here, you know that each um, 
hexadecimal number is written in four digits and therefore uh, and, and the reason they did this like they they actually invented the hexadecimal to go up to 16 like this added a b c d e f because they wanted one digit so therefore they can actually write the content of the byte very easily with two packs of four bits so they can represent uh instead of writing one zero zero one one zero zero something like that they just write the uh the hexadecimal number and that's much easier to to display the bit pattern are we okay with this okay and the next thing you need to understand about uh, um, values that you have in uh, uh, the values that are represented in uh, um, what shall I call it in uh, uh, binary is that there is no negative numbers in the computer we don't have because because I wanted to, to go to the next level and I see that you don't know it you, know, you might not know uh, how many of you know what's two's complement holy mother so let's let me go through this then I have to go through it okay so um, let me just create a new one um, what do I do let me come up here okay so what is uh, and I want you to I want you to uh, reply to me uh, uh, when I'm asking you type your response over here so I can see okay so let's say we have a, um, a four digit bit and I have everything at right side so if I write this what is this number in decimal somebody write four really seriously the answer is that right and the rest of you are not even the answer is that's right the pattern is right here see this is the pattern okay so it's two beautiful okay now see what I'm gonna do over here the very first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna invert everything over there so I'm gonna write one one zero one okay so the value that you have over here what is the corresponding value in a four digit thing that you have in here it's 13 fantastic so it's a positive number it's 13 we understand this now I'm gonna add one to it so I'm gonna write over here one plus and I want to know what the outcome is going to be okay so one plus one okay it becomes two okay therefore uh, <laughs> if I can write it over here so this will be okay so I'm trying to press insert and see no okay that's better so one plus one becomes two which means zero goes over here and one comes up up over here are we okay with this then the next thing we want to do thank you next thing we want to do one plus zero over here it becomes one and the next one is one and the next one is one okay so now I have um, okay now over here I have one 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 zero as you see okay so how do I explain this I want to let's do something else I'm not gonna do that let's do something else sorry I'll, I'm trying to go back to you I want to one but it's it's a little difficult to you suddenly go back to that basics let me um, what do I do what do I do 
let's put it like this uh we can go like a simple yeah, true I'm false gonna table. use the spit patterns that I have right over here I'm gonna use that instead okay so so let's do it like this so let's do it like this I'm gonna um, first let's let's I'm just gonna have a W and nothing but W so I'm gonna have the W and we run the W this is the uh, the bit pattern for for W that is coming out and let's make that one something uh, like this uh, 3 4 let's say and that's 3 4 okay and if I display 3 4 at the value for 3 4 so that's the pit pattern for it and if I go see out W and L and I'm gonna make convert that to an integer so we can see what the value is the value of that one is 52 so that binary representation is 52 are we all okay with this you can just say K over there or yes or whatever oh, so we are all okay with this all right good good so now we are going somewhere all right now there is something that is called bitwise not so I can do something like this over here character um, let's call it um, X or M I'm gonna call it M I can say over here M is set to not W and what happens over here is essentially is that it inverts everything backwards so if I actually go like this if I do it like this as you see everything's exactly opposite at the top of, of the top one are we okay with this all right so now what I'm gonna do in here is this I'm gonna say M is equal to M plus 1 I'm gonna add 1 to M and then I'm gonna show the bit pattern again we okay with this I added one to this all right now I am going to do this take a look I hope this works all right and the result is minus 52 do you see this what I did is called two's complement which is reversing all the bits inside a value and reversing a bit inside a value and uh, essentially adding one to it now if I put the D, the two patterns side by side so right now after this I'm gonna show the bit pattern of the negative one that we had and the positive one so in here I'm gonna say C out that's 52 this is let's leave it int W and this one is going to be the minus one oh forgot that we have a minus so I need to go uh, one space over here okay are we okay with this all right 
now I'm gonna do the addition that I have done up there with these two as you see these are just two bit patterns that uh, we have one is 52 the other one is minus 50 if you add these two things up together 0 and 0 so in here if I actually hmm, how do I do it let me just copy it and bring it down here that's why it's it's better to be on board if to do all these things if I actually do that if I do a plus between the two plot between these two this is what's gonna happen so this is gonna be zero and then I'm gonna have zero in here it's gonna be zero a one goes up here a one goes up here then one and one zero again a one goes up here one and one zero again a one goes up here one and one zero again a one goes up here one and one zero again a one goes up here one and one zero a one goes up but this oh sorry that's a zero but but the one that we have I cannot put it over here because I already have eight spaces so this one is gonna go to garbage it's gonna go to bit pocket as we call it so yeah 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 <laughs> it's so hard people uh, okay so that extra one will go to garbage therefore this plus this becomes zero which means 52 and plus minus 52 becomes zero do we understand this <laughs> So when in your code you write something like um, a is equal to b minus minus c when you write something like this in your code let's put it like this when I write integer a b a and let's say b is 10 and c is 5 okay when you write a is equal to B minus C and let's make C a little smaller so the values are different and you write over here C out A and obviously that's gonna be the value 6 it's the same thing as saying A is equal to B plus not C plus 1 so these two will create the same scenario as you see they are both six do we understand this okay because of two's complement which essentially is a negative uh, value of what you have let's see what is the value of negative one so if positive one is zero 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 one negative one becomes one 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 zero plus one which is essentially one so because of this fact we will understand that all the values that you write the left bit identifies if the value is negative or the value is positive and that is the reason that the maximum number for assigned value can is always one less than the value that you have for the negative one because with the negative one you can go one larger so uh, so zero kind of falls into the category of the positive ones so anything that is at left standing at left it holds the sign of the digit so if I say if you look at this this is 128 and that's minus this is 1 and that's 
So, so this is my so it 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 holds it over uh, uh, it holds the number over here in two's complement at the left side whatever you have we call it a sign bit that bit identifies if your value is negative or positive do we understand this yes iman so if the left digit is to identify like the sign of the number what if we have one zero 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 like like just just the one on the left and the rest of the digits to be zero like what is that number then that's eight zero eight um, and zero in hexadecimal if it is unsigned if you want to know what the value is that do a two's complement and you're going to see what the value is actually Okay. Thanks. Okay. So uh, let's do it. You want to see what is the value? Let's do it. It's easy. So in here, I'm going to say character X, and I'm going to set um, and I'm going to make X. Uh, what do I got to do with X? I'm going to say X is one. Now I'm going to say X left shift uh, equal seven. Right. That brings the sets shifts the uh, one back to uh, position one, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I'll go see out X. And then you can see what the value is. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> integer. If I don't do integer, it won't show it, right? So, you see that? Okay, yeah, got it. So that's the biggest number that you have. And because this, the biggest number that you have for positive ones is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, that's 127. Got it? Yeah, yeah, thanks. All right. So, so, so that's, that's how negative numbers are shown. Now, I have a question. If I divide minus 4 by 2, what is the answer? Sorry, if I divide minus 8 by 2, what is the answer? Minus 8 divided by 2. Minus 4. So, I see, it's, the funny thing is that we have college students over here and people are hesitating to write minus 4. I mean, holy mother of... <laughs> okay, all right, so, so it's minus 4. So I was typing... <laughs> A minus and a four. How long it takes for it? <laughs> anyway, I was actually working. On that. Anyway, so 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 so. What I'm saying is that because the division needs to keep the sign, that's why when you right shift a negative number, when you right shift a negative number. So if I right shift this one to keep the sign, instead of filling the left with zero. The right shift fills it with one instead of zero. Do we understand this? I know it takes a little while to to digest it. All right, that's exactly what I want to say. Uh, Sazini, go ahead. So you said when you right shift a negative number in decimal, the Wait, one is replaced by this, a zero. This is a negative number, right? Yeah. So let me bring it down here. If I want to right shift this uh, number, what do I do? So essentially the number comes over here. This is the right shift of that number, correct? Yeah. So this one goes to garbage, correct? Yep. So what do we fill this one with? If I put over here zero, it suddenly turns positive. Ooh, okay. So because okay. it's a right shift, if this variable is an signed variable not an unsigned if it's unsigned there is no negative okay that one doesn't mean it's negative but if it's mm. a signed one it means this wine is the sign of being negative when you right shift it fills it with one so okay. rules left shift always fills the right with zero always 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 there is no other way right shift 
fills the left with zero if the variable is unsigned. Right shift fills shift fills the left with one if the variable is a signed one. Are we okay with this? That is why at any moment if you want to do shifting to left and right and you don't want you want the memory dump of the place to be shifted to left and right you have to make sure that uh, you do it with an unsigned if you do it with signed then the result and left and shift left shift and right shift is not going to work out iman go ahead so i just didn't get something about the like the sign of the number so like the left digit in a binary number is always for the sign the left bit did i say digit the left bit the left bit like in binary right yes so like in the picture that we have like on the right mm -hmm. one zero 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 it says to be eight like but but it should be a negative number right oh my dear this is a nibble this is just four bits okay so that that so, applies only to and and eight and bits. the values they are written over here these values are only positive it's okay it's considering so okay iman we have two different types of things that we want to consider when we are dealing with bits. We want to know what is the decimal value. We want to know what is the bit pattern. Bit pattern is always positive. It doesn't think of anything as negative because you are looking at a pattern. But if you want to know what the bit pattern will be if the variable is signed, then this is what you're considering. Okay, so for the one zero zero zero, if it was signed, it would have been yeah. What? But we don't have a four bit oh, okay. thing. If it if it was eight eight zero, it was a negative one hundred and twenty eight. Remember? Okay, okay, got it, got it. All right, but uh, uh, obviously, I have to I have to write something like this. So let's do it like this. I'm gonna. Let's in here. I'm gonna say, uh, where is it? And again, I'm gonna say x is one and x shifted six times to left. Uh, Wilson has a question. Give me a second, Wilson. Oh, I can't do that because I have to put all ones in it. Sixty, right? That's not going to work. That is not going to work. So, that is a wrong example. I wanted to put a bit pattern for it. So, let's do it like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say bit pattern of um, in here. I'm gonna say. It, the code became became a mess. Mm. I'm gonna come down to the bit pattern over here for the the signed one. They're all signed, so I'm gonna come down over here. In here, I'm gonna say M is uh, 127, and in here, I'm gonna say M is minus 128 to see the two edges of the thing and see what they are. So as you see, positive 127 is zeros and all ones, 
and negative is a minus is one and that one now wilson go ahead um okay let me just try to remember what i was gonna okay so let's say so so basically what you said before about uh iman's thing um for if it was if it was, if the bit pattern was like um two binary so like for uh eight digit um, yeah eight digits so it'd be zero 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 so on and so forth um then the whole and let's say it was unsigned then like we wouldn't have to worry about like negative um it wouldn't be printed as like negative songs or so forth um but let's say like it was assigned then we have to like think about like the first uh digit being a zero or one and that would exactly when you are doing a right shift okay. so when you, as, essentially when you are doing a left shift you don't need to worry about anything at all left shift always everything is zero at right when you are doing a light shift you have to look the thing that you are right shifting is it assigned or an unsigned if it's assigned, it's going to be filled with one. If it's unsigned, it won't. It's going to be one. The next thing I wanted to say, so another thing that I'm just to kind of have uh, uh, put emphasis on this is that this is 127. So the bit pattern for this will be, so this it, we're going to see the bit pattern of 7F uh, over here. 7F is the highest uh, 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 positive number, and the highest negative number is the highest negative number will be something like this. So if I run it, it shows exactly what I mean. So um, when uh, Iman was saying, uh, what if the left one is 8? This is what I'm talking about. Iman, do you see this? Yeah, yeah. Does this answer your question, hopefully? Um, I just don't understand. So for, the, for it to be the biggest value it can get, we should put all of it 1, right? Like put all the digits, like change all of the digits to 1. Am I, am to I get not the right? biggest value? Yeah. Except for the side. So if you, if, if, if you have a if you ha let's say if, I, if let's say if you have an integer and you want the like at a, a, a 32-bit integer or let's say a 16-bit integer if the 16-bit integer that you have is uh, is is signed the biggest positive number is 0 one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight this is the biggest positive number for a signed short integer okay because you have to say positive and then set everything to one but two's complement remember that all the bits are reversed so this becomes the negative and the biggest number becomes all ones reversed which is zero 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 zero. It's two's complement. Remember that. So. So the like the way we calculated it is that for the first one, it's one multi. Like if it was a, if it was an eight digit thing, okay. the way we calculated it was one multiplied by two to the power of seven. And how are we going to do that in the second one? You don't. So like everything is positive. No, you calculate the positive one. You do a second complement to see what is the value. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So you reverse so it and you add one. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Got it. That's that's that. Yeah, my yeah. my. The whole point of what I was saying is that there are no negative numbers in a computer. Everything is positive. Negative is just two's complement. That's all. That's how it works. There is no positive. There is no plus. There is no minus. Everything is positive. Everything is plus. Okay? And that's that. So now all you need to know is about the bitwise uh, operators that we have. So let me just save this thing. This became mishmash. I'm sorry. It's kind of a bit. Um, I'm going to get A dash bits. 
so this was the positive and negative ones but I don't want to I don't want to do a negative one I want to do a positive and just show you how, how the bitwise operators work and then we continue after that we don't need the integer one the onside one is what we want and in here I'm going to uh, create the things I wanted to create so now I will create an, uh, uh, an unsigned uh, let me um, split the window for us to see what's going on I don't need the whoops actually this is a good enough though forget it okay so in here I'm gonna say unsigned int V I'll put over here X let's say uh, what do I put I put um, something like say uh, 6 D so 60 is my value okay so on unsigned unsigned int and I'm gonna have unsigned int K I'm going to set it to 0x, uh, say, I don't know, what do I do, uh, 3, 5, okay? So let's show the bit patterns and see what they are. So in here I'm going to, uh, the bit pattern thingy, I'm going to add over here a prompt, const character pointer prompt. And before I show anything, I'm going to show the prompt. I just want to show a prompt over there. So I'm going to say see out prompt. And I'm going to do, uh, that's it, prompt. See out prompt and then show the rest of the thing. I just want to show something over there. I don't want to keep printing this thing over here. So I'm going to say bit pattern. <coughs> so this is going to be bit pattern for V. That is... 0x60 so that's v oh unsigned character sorry okay and in here i'm going to call it unsigned character e e and i'm going to set that one to 0 I don't want to put anything in. Okay, so that's that's V and that's K. That is what was the K? Three five. Three five and that's K. There we go. Okay, so we have V that is that value as you see. And uh, let me see if I have enough. Uh, I'm going to change this one to um, 7, I think. 3, 7. I'm going to change that. I just because I want it to be something that we can see to how things are happening. Let me see. That's better. So now I have uh, 3, 7. Now. Let's see all the things that we need to know, all the stuff we need to know about uh, bitwise operators. So in here, I'm going to say E is set to V and K. Essentially, V and K will be the AND of the two. And uh, uh, I'm going to bring the bit pattern over here. Okay, so in here, I'm going to do like this. okay so we're gonna see the E okay so when you look at it you will see that essentially an AND between the two is an, an a bitwise AND one by one so one one is one zero one is zero one one is one each bit corresponding bit is an AND is done between them and it shows exactly what the value is are we okay with this <laughs> Okay, 
So the next thing we want to do over here is to do an OR and see what happens. So I'm going to copy the whole thing again. And in here, I'm just going to have an OR happening between the two. Okay, so now we are doing E, o, e is the, uh, the V and K, and it's an OR between the two. And as you see, OR is essentially um, at least one of them being one. So as you see everything, it actually becomes uh, uh, 7F um, because the, the OR result means at least one of them has to be one. Are we okay with this? Now, this is what I want to, I want you to, to uh, pay attention to, okay? Now, take a look, please. This is what I'm going to do. In here, I'm going to say, I'm going to put over here what we call exclusive OR. Now look at it and see what happens. With exclusive OR, same is bad. Different is good. So 1 and 1 is 0, 0 and 1 is 1, 1 and 1 is 0, 0 and 1. And as you see what happens, right? Are we okay with this? Okay, now this is what I want you to pay attention to. This is important. Okay, so now in here, I'm going to create another one. And in here, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say, let, let, me, let me put the bit patterns over here first. So what I'm going to do is <coughs> having the E exclusive or to k and i'm going to put the value in r so this is going to be e this is going to be r equal to e exclusive or to k and in here i'm going to put the value of e actually we have the value of e up there so i'm not going to uh, yeah, I'm just, it's better to write it. So the value of E, whatever it was, I don't know what the value was. Whatever it is, I don't know. Let's do it like this. Um, but we have it. So the result is like that. And then we're going to exclusive or E to K, and we're going to show the R. Please pay attention. Now, I did exclusive or, oh. Exclusive or and exclusive or one more time. <clears throat> so I did as an exclusive or between V and K, and the result was this. You see that? Zero one zero one one zero one zero. And I brought that value down. I exclusive or that value that was E again to K. And look what the result is. Compare this result with this one. One more time. Let me just write it properly over here. So, I exclusive or V to K, and this was the result. I took that E again and exclusive or it back to K, the value of K that are exclusive or V2. And the R, as you see, became the exact same thing as V. Take a look. Did we see what happened? 
This is basis of encryption. V is your value. Key is what you encrypt the value E with. E is the encrypted value. So as you see, the value that is encrypted over here is nothing like what the value that you have up there. It's a completely different thing. But if I take that encrypted code and apply the key to it again, the original value comes back. Wilson. So just to make sure basis of encryption basically means, let's say I do the um, Pac-Man trying to eat from uh, above symbol onto V and K. Um, I can use E to basically get K or E, but however though, I have to use either V or K to um, think do the same thing we did with the Pac-Man thingy before, right? If I can understand, I would like to say yes, but I, I didn't understand the question. Um, I let me just mention it one more time, and if I see if if that's what you said or I'm mistaken. What okay. we so what we have over here is the value that you want yep. to encrypt it. Yeah, you get a key. You get a key, but mm. you keep the key in secret. Nobody knows what the key is. Yeah. You encrypt it and you get an encrypted value. You pass the encrypted value to me. Mm. And without anybody knowing, separately, you send me the key. Yeah. To get the value you sent to me back in an encrypted format, I apply the key to the encrypted value. I get the original value back. Did I make sense? Yep, that's the thing I meant. Yes, that's exact. So that's what we do. But obviously, this is no encryption. In three seconds, you can decrypt it. There is no problem with this. The, the thing that we're going to do the next time I'm going to come over there, I'll try to do like a 16-bit encryption for you so you can see how it's done. So this action of encryption is like uh, we rotate and, 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 and apply the key over and over and over and over. It's like, it's like you're, you're beating a, 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 an egg in a, in a bowl, okay? When you beat an egg in a bowl, it becomes completely um, scrambled. Now... When it's scrambled, if you, if theoretically you could have the movement of your hand done exactly in backward motion, you could have turned that scrambled egg back to old. It is impossible. It's as if you are uh, uh, reversing the video that you have taken. It is impossible in reality, but in computer science, is we scramble the data very uh, thoroughly. And then after it's done, we do the exact same thing to the scrambled thing using the key and the original value comes out. And that's the encryption that is done. Okay, so we are going to work on this the next time. But these, what you saw over here, these are all the bitwise operators that we have uh, that you need to know. And there is one more thing called the bit field uh, that I'm going to talk about again the next day that we are coming in class. It's a very simple thing. You can read it yourself too. Um, and then we'll continue after that. Any questions? All right. This is it then. Thank you very much. And uh, also, do you want us to send you the bit? Pardon me, the uh, bit manipulator. Do you want us to send it today or on Friday? No, and at any time, put it in a GitHub and let me know. All right, okay, sure. Put it in a GitHub and let me know. I want to see how you did it. All right, everyone, have yourself a beautiful day, and uh, I'll see you on Friday. Bye, everyone. Friday, bye. <laughs>